It's been claimed that the Biloxi River footprints are a hoax carved into the limestone bedrock as a tourist attraction. Well, we found trails leading under limestone ledges and actually removed the limestone ledges one slab of rock at a time. And we found that both the dinosaur footprints and the trail of human footprints continued under the rock ledges. This evidence is real. This is said to be the fossilized finger of a human being. It too was reportedly found in the same strata as the dinosaur tracks, dating to over a hundred million years old. It had what appeared to be a nail, what appeared to be a cuticle, a taper, a humanoid shape. After I saw the CAT scan, there was no longer any room in my mind for doubt. This scan shows the shape of the finger, it shows tissue beneath the skin of the finger. It shows the bone. It shows the joints. It shows a ligament. That tells me this is a human finger. The limestone layer that preserved these artifacts is reportedly dated at around 135 million years old. Yet, as we saw earlier, objects have been found in rock strata much older than this. In Klerkstorp, South Africa, Hundreds of metallic spheres were found by miners in Precambrian strata, said to be a fantastic 2.8 billion years old. The controversy centers around the fine grooves encircling some of the spheres. Lab technicians were at a loss to explain how they could have been formed by any known natural process. According to the curator of the Klerksdorp Museum, Rolf Mars, the spheres are a complete mystery. They look man-made, yet at the time in Earth's history when they came to rest on this rock, no intelligent life existed. They're like nothing I've ever seen before. We've seen a broad range of evidence, some of it highly speculative. But there are enough well-documented cases to call for a closer look at the conventional explanation of man's origins, the theory of evolution. England is the birthplace of evolution's first champion, Charles Darwin. Darwin's theory of evolution proposes that simple life forms or species evolved into more complex species by accidental changes over long periods of time. For example, given five million years, an ape can evolve into a man. Since Darwin's time, his theory has become central to our understanding of how man came into existence. It's almost universally accepted today. But according to science investigator Richard Milton, Darwin's theory of how man evolved from the apes has some critical problems. The building behind me is London's Natural History Museum. It looks rather like a cathedral or a church, and in a way that's what it is. It's a kind of temple to Darwin's theory of evolution. People come to museums like the Natural History Museum to get answers to their question. Have we evolved from apes? Do humans and apes share a common ancestor? And to look at an exhibit like this, you'd think that question had been answered decisively yes. But the answer is far from decisive. In fact, this representation is an interpretation of the fossils, the interpretation of one group of scientists. There are other interpretations, but you won't find them in this museum or any other museum in the world. In the model of the evolutionary tree, man and apes are said to share a common ancestor. However, evidence of that common ancestor is highly contested. That's why it is still called the missing link. When Darwin's theory of evolution was embraced, it was assumed that in the next century enough fossil evidence would be found to prove that man had evolved from the apes. Darwinists have promised us a missing link, and so they've got to deliver. They've got to come up with one. Uh, any missing link will do, it seems. Uh, every so often a skeleton is found in Africa, its uh, discoverers describe it as being the missing link, the headlines come and go, and then later on, that skeleton, th those bones, are reclassified either as human or as ape. And so far, the missing link is still missing. One of the most classic examples of this is the story of Java Man, discovered by Eugene Dubois in 1892. Dubois discovered a very primitive-looking ape-like skull cap and he discovered this thigh bone about 40 feet away. 
he said, well, obviously they must belong to the same creature. And that creature walked erect like a, a human being and had an ape-like skull, so that must be a missing link, the Pithecanthropus ape man. So maybe you had a big ape and a, a human being living together in Java about a million years ago. The important point to make about the Java man discovery is that it's based on a speculative leap in which two pieces of evidence are put together in a way that's not really warranted. Hominid fossils discovered in Kenya are challenging a long-held view of human evolution now. The new fossil evidence reveals an overlap of about 500,000 years during which Homo habilis and Homo erectus must have coexisted in the basin area, the region of East Africa where the fossils were unearthed. And if this is all true, and they believe it is, it throws evolution maybe out the door. Uh, our guest tonight, Michael Cremo, is a member of the History of Science Society, the World Archaeological Congress, the Philosophy of Science Association, the European Association of Archaeologists, and a research associate in history and philosophy for the science of the Bhaktivya Danta Institute. What they found is that these uh, two so-called human ancestors, Homo habilis, and Homo erectus were actually coexisting with each other for about 500,000 years in East Africa. And if they're coexisting with each other, that meant one, uh, the, the later one, Homo erectus, didn't come from the earlier one, Homo habilis. So there's an additional fact, however, that they haven't mentioned in these reports, and that is that there's evidence that humans like us were coexisting with Homo erectus mm -hmm. and Homo habilis at the same time between uh, a million and a million and a half years ago. Does that increase the possibility, Michael, because we've all heard these stories, that we might have been genetically manipulated by another civilization somehow? Well, that's, that's uh, one way to look at it. Uh, I think definitely were not the result of some random process of evolution. I think if you look at the biological complexity of human beings right down to the level of the DNA, uh, it's extremely complex. And it doesn't seem that such an extremely complex system could have come about simply by chance, random mutations, and things like that. So I think, yes, there was some intelligence behind the origin of the human species and all other species as well. And I think there definitely is an extraterrestrial element to it. I think we're part of a whole cosmic hierarchy of beings. It's not that... Uh, life only exists on Earth. If you look at the um, at the detail details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. <laughs> 